Hey everyone, Adam here with a Loop Hero guide. So Loop Hero came out of seemingly nowhere. I picked it up last week and got addicted to it. I think I played 60 hours in the first four days of owning the game, which is odd for me. And I recently finished getting all of these Steam achievements for the game. I've had some people stop by the stream and ask about some of the achievements and how to get them, what the easiest way is, if some of them are even possible. And yes, they all are possible, although some are kind of grindy and difficult. In this guide, I'm going to go over the end time for lunch achievement, which is to beat the Lich, the first boss, on your very first expedition on a new save file. So let's get right in. I will give you some tips and tricks as we go along. I'll try to fast forward through the parts where we're just kind of going through the loop, going through the motions. Let's get in. Select save spots. So we're going to do a brand new save here. And we're going to click on skip tutorial and start. I can see we're not using any kind of edited I and I. It tells you in the bottom right if you are. So this is just the base game. It looks like uh, version point or 1.012 or something like that. So right off the bat, we're gonna build the campfire so we can do our first expedition. So I like to edit the deck. You can actually do this achievement pretty easily with any combination of the cards really. Beacon though, it's no help at all. Treasury, you can either take it or leave it. You can get some good loot out of treasury. However, it is going to spawn some gargoyles that you're going to have to deal with. So that's up to you. I found it most consistent not to take it for this achievement specifically. Same thing with the Vampire Mansion. I've had more consistency not taking it in order to get this achievement. However, getting an early Vampire Mansion down, getting some extra loot, some extra cards for vampires being alongside of slimes can be really awesome. However, the vampires can cause a problem in the later loops of this achievement, especially if you have a harpy land inside the vampire zone. So we're going to turn that off as well. And this is the route we're going to go with. Cemetery Grove, Spider Cocoon, Battlefield, Road Lantern, Rock Meadow, Oblivion. So the first loop, we want it to take as long as we possibly can reason for that is the more days that pass, the more slimes it can possibly spawn, the more loop one cards and equipment we can get. So we will equip things that don't give us additional damage on loop one. So this one has counterattacks. So we're not going to equip that right now, even though that's a pretty good starter ring with the evasion and the vampirism. We're going to leave that in our inventory and equip it uh, maybe after this loop. So we want to finish off this first loop slowly. I'm going to go ahead and place rocks up here to eventually make a mountain peak. We're going to use rocks because they are less synergetic than mountains, and we don't want to waste our mountain synergy. So we'll do a 3x3 three three of rocks, spot a mountain peak, and I'll talk more about that as we get the rocks. All right, we want to make sure we put our meadows adjacent to something other than a meadow, so it becomes a blooming meadow. If you do that, instead of healing 2 per day, it's going to heal 3 per day. We get our first monster card. I'm going to go ahead and place this over near the cozy campsite. The reason for this is one of the main things we need to do in order to beat the Lich on our first expedition is block any Lich Palaces from spawning. So on the first expedition, when the Lich spawns, it will spawn a three by three of Lich Palaces adjacent to the cozy camp, including road tiles and beside the road. Each of the Lich Palaces give the Lich an additional 5% HP and 5% damage. So making it much harder. You can either Oblivion them after they spawn to get rid of them, or you can just block those spots and they'll just never spawn in the first place. So that's what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna put some you know, groves, cemeteries down around the starting area on the road, and then along the side we'll do lanterns and, and spider cocoons and things like that. All right, we got our first cemetery, so again, we're going to put that there in order to block the Lich Palace. But be careful placing too many cemeteries. Skeletons scale pretty quickly, and they have a lot of defense. They also hit pretty hard, even though they hit slowly. The good thing about skeletons, though, is if you can pick up magic damage, magic damage shreds through them very quickly so if you end up placing a lot of cemeteries maybe prioritize magic damage above some of the others we get another spider cocoon i'm gonna place this one way over here so we can get enough uh we can get some spider spawns before we get there and we get some time for some regen from the the day passing also the regen stat if we get some again we're wanting this loop to take quite a while so i'm not equipping my weapon or my damage ring right now so I want this to take a while and spawn some extra mobs. Again, I'm going to spread out the spiders so we can get more of them. Place a rock up here. We got our first lantern. Okay, so the lantern, what it does, is not only is it going to block the Lich Palace, but for every lantern that is overlapping a tile, that row tile has one less enemy max it can spawn. 
So with one lantern, it can only spawn a max of three. Two lanterns overlapping, a max of two. And yes, if you can get four lanterns overlapping, it won't spawn anything in that tile. Um, which is, I don't, I don't know why you would want to do that, but you could do that if, if you really want to. Now, one caveat to that I'll talk about just while we're doing the loop here is that vampires and other spawning mobs like that don't care about the lantern. Vampires will still join in the battle. Uh, gargoyles will still land, you know, all that good stuff. All right, we got a battlefield. A battlefield we want to put early into the loop, and we don't want to overlap very much else because we don't want to spawn ghosts. So this is going to give us a chest uh, every loop. But if you have some uh, certain creatures there spawning, there's a chance that the battlefield will spawn a ghost when they die, and then has a chance of spawning a ghost of a ghost, and then a prime matter, I believe it is, which is basically a ghost of a ghost of a ghost. And they can really screw up your run. I mean, there's definitely reasons to spawn them, but for this achievement, we're going to kind of avoid that. All right, we are working on finishing up our second loop. So I think we'll go ahead and start equipping this stuff. As you can see, we're starting to take a little bit of damage, so we probably should start dealing some damage back. Another thing I did want to mention while we're early here is that white and blue items are kind of what you're looking for. Obviously, the yellow and the orange are going to have... Uh, they can be very good as well. But basically, how it works in Loop Hero is that the budget of the item is based on its level. And then how many different kind of stats it has, how many rows of stats, is based on the rarity. But the rarity doesn't give it an extra budget. So that's why you can have something like a uh, gray axe that's level 8, let's say. It has way more damage than a level 8 orange axe. It's because that orange axe is... Stats are spread between four different things rather than all just packed into damage. So keep an eye on that. Uh, don't just toss away gray or blue items. So like I said, I am going to hold on to the mountains because they are more synergetic. You get some extra health if they are adjacent to additional mountains or rocks than you do with the rocks themselves. So we'll use rocks to make the mountain peak. And then we'll save the mountains for the extra health. We're going to hold on this this oblivion to destroy a goblin camp. So when you do get your first 10 rocks or mountains or multiples of 10, every time you get a multiple of 10, it's going to spawn a goblin camp. Goblins are pretty deadly, not just early game mobs, but throughout. So we're going to save the oblivions to get rid of the goblin camps and allow us to put down mountains and rocks. Okay, so our road tiles around the camp are good. So we're going to start spreading out these mobs so that we can get some regen on our way to the mobs. We want as many enemies as we can get as soon as we can get them. The more enemies we have, the more chances at loot, the closer we get to spawn the boss. And the earlier we spawn the boss, the weaker it is. So the more loops that we take to get to the boss, the stronger it will become. So the more enemies, the better. Excellent, another battlefield. So we want to make sure this battlefield doesn't overlap the zone of this one. And the reason why is if we do that, it's going to spawn Blood Path. Blood Path can spawn an additional enemy type that we don't really want to deal with. Uh, it's a lot of risk for very little to no reward. So some of the stats we want to look for while we're doing the loop itself is going to be attack speed, vampirism, damage to all, and magic attack. Damage to all is very good for clearing out mobs. Magic damage, like I mentioned earlier, is great for getting rid of skeletons. Look at that. Magic damage and damage to all. We do lose our little bit of vampirism, but that's okay at this stage. So we do have these oblivions, so I'm going to go ahead and place down some mountains. Get some extra health. As you can see, when we spawned our 10th mountain, it spawned the goblin camp. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. We're going to make sure we don't do the 3x3. Three three. We don't want to spawn the mountain peak with mountains. We wouldn't do that with the rocks. So we've talked a little bit about the stats that we're looking for for the loop itself and how to... Stay healthy as we go through the loop, mainly attack speed and vampirism. Vampirism does work off of any sources of damage, so it's going to work off of damage to all, to magic damage, etc. So vampirism is very, very good to get. Uh, hold that thought. We just made our mountain peak. So the first 3x3 three three that you do of mountains or rocks or any combination of those will make your mountain peak. The mountain peak is going to give us a huge bonus to health. Downside is it's going to spawn a harpy every two days. Harpies are pretty deadly, especially if they land on... For instance, a vampire tile. And the higher the loops go, the deadlier the harpy's going to get, of course. With this achievement, I think it's fine to go ahead and spawn the harpy early on. It's not a huge deal. We're going to get some extra loot from her. 
It's worth the risk, in my opinion. As I was saying, as far as the stats you're going to look for for the Lich itself, there's definitely RNG in the drops in the game, right? So you're not always going to be able to aim the exact build you want. I mean, you can do that, but it might take you more runs. So there's a couple builds that are very consistent against the Lich. One of those is regeneration. If you can get 7 to 9 regen per second by around loop 7 or 8, that alone can carry you through the boss. So that's one way to do it. Another way is through evasion. Get enough evasion, uh, the boss attacks very slowly, so when the boss misses an attack, it's pretty brutal. Now, brutal for the boss, not for us, of course, so... If you can save evasion gear, for instance, if you get a white ring with a lot of evasion, you might want to save that. And you can do that by dragging an item to the top here. Uh, the item is going to go along this route. When it gets to the end, if you get another item, it is turned into resources or deleted. So if there's an item you want to save that maybe isn't good for the loop, like high evasion, you can just keep dragging it to the front and save it and put it on before the boss. So regeneration is good against the boss. Evasion is good against the boss. The other thing that is good is... Same thing is good for the loop, actually. So, high speed, high vampirism. Now, if you miss the boss, it really does suck because obviously vampirism is not working if you don't deal damage. So, it's a little inconsistent at times, a little bit more RNG than just stacking regeneration. However, it can absolutely save you as long as you don't get a bunch of unlucky dodges or evasions on the boss. As far as attack speed against the boss, attack speed is good in general, and it's very good with vampirism, which you can probably guess. However, there is kind of a limit of how useful attack speed ends up getting. There is a stamina bar in this game, you might have not noticed, but after we attack here, you can see that gray bar, that's the stamina bar. If we attack too much or evade too much or other things that use stamina and this is depleted, we're actually not going to be able to attack very fast for a little while. So. After about 40% attack speed, additional attack speed against the boss is not recommended. So a quick recap, basically if you can get between 7 and 9 regeneration per second by around loop 7 or 8, or you can get about 40% attack speed with as much vampirism as possible, those are kind of the, the easiest things to aim for in order to take out the boss consistently on the first expedition out. All right, so we have completely surrounded the cozy camp. So now when we do spawn the Lich, when this bar gets full from playing cards, the Lich won't be able to spawn any Lich palaces. So we don't have to worry about stacking anything else in this area unless we want to for some reason. We'll probably start spreading out our other spawners around, although it's getting kind of crowded. So although our stats aren't quite where I want them, we're gonna go ahead and summon the boss. So probably about two cards away from summoning so we're gonna go ahead and do that the loops getting a little bit scary hopefully we'll get some more gear on the way there uh we also don't want to spawn much later than loop six or seven if we can keep from it so i'm gonna go ahead and throw down these rocks that'll give us a little bit more hp and the boss is summoned and we're just gonna go ahead and use everything as you can see he didn't spawn any of the lich palaces so let's go ahead and throw down the rest of these rocks here we'll leave that in case we get a mountain and we'll hold on to the Oblivion if we have a scary battle that we maybe want to just delete and not fight so we can, we can enter the Lich fight with decent health. Alright, we have reached the Lich fight. So here's where you want to place down any additional tiles that might help you out. Mountains, rocks, meadows, just place everything that has a chance to give you any kind of bonus against the lich bonus to health whatever also now is the time to go through and change out to gear that maybe wasn't the greatest for the loop but that you've held on to for the lich so stacking your evasion gear or your regen gear so we're gonna go ahead and do that as you can see now we have 7.2 regen which is maybe a little bit less than i normally like to have uh hopefully that's enough usually i like to have around nine or if not Around 40% attack speed and some vampirism. Uh, let's see how it goes. The awesome thing about the regen is it works right there when he's coming out of his little uh, cocoon or egg or whatever. So we actually got a little bit of heal plus the day pass. So we got a nice heal at the beginning. So let's see how it goes. And 
And just like that, the Lich is dead and we have completed in time for lunch again. As you can see, I didn't even have the stats I really wanted. Like I, I didn't get good RNG and hit the exact stats that I needed, quote unquote, to kill the Lich. And we still got it on the first try. So this is very consistent. And we'll just go into the statistics so you can see, yes, this was on the first try, even though you've, you've seen all of this. So we're just going to go ahead and retreat. If you haven't gotten the achievement before, that is when it will pop up. You'll have it in your trophies, both in game and on your Steam achievements. So statistics. Fast to be the Lich uh, 7 on this. Kill by zero. You haven't been killed yet. Amazing. All right. So that's it. I hope that helps you to get the in time for lunch achievement. Just remember that you want to really put as many monsters on your loop as possible as soon as possible. And you really want the loop to take as long as you can. The longer your loop takes, the more days pass during the loop, the more heals you get, the more cards you get, the more chances at loot that you really need for the boss that you get. Make sure that you also cram a bunch of buildings, road tiles around the camp so that the Lich can't spawn its Lich Palaces. Each Lich Palace gives 5% additional damage and HP to the Lich and can completely change that. Like right there, it wasn't too close, but if the Lich had 5 to 10% more HP, we might not have been able to do it. Again, as far as builds go, you want attack speed and vampirism damage to all, maybe some magic damage for the loop itself. So kind of prioritize that as you go through the loop and you're killing monsters. Drag gear that you want for the Lich itself to the top of your inventory so it doesn't get deleted. And for that, you want to aim for a lot of either regeneration or evasion. Although if you do get a good build with vampirism damage and around 40% attack speed, that will also do it consistently as well. So don't try to force one of those three builds. Go and lean into whichever the three of the game is kind of hinting that you should build that run. I hope you enjoyed this Loop Hero Achievement Guide for In Time for Lunch. It's a lot different than my normal guides. It's unscripted. It's more off the cuff. I did it mainly to help some people that were coming into the stream and having trouble with the achievements. So hopefully it helped you as well. If you like this type of guide, if you'd like to see more kind of unscripted guides like this on the channel or Loop Hero content or guides, or maybe achievement hunting guides for Loop Hero and other games, please let me know in the comments below or just by liking the video. It helps out the algorithm a ton and it lets me know what to focus on with my content for YouTube. And as always, thank you for watching.